Ever heard of a pluot? It's a cross between a plum and an apricot. What about a tangelo? That's a cross between a tangerine and a grapefruit. Those are the results of seed breeding. It's kind of like how we got the labradoodle, or liger. You cross two breeds to make a new one with the best traits of each. But how does it work? Let's say you wanted to make a consistently blue tomato that could be sold to grocery stores and chefs nationwide. And let's assume blue tomatoes already occur in some wild tomatoes in nature, but not consistently enough to sell to the masses. That's where seed breeding comes in. Most conventional seed breeding takes place in greenhouses to have better control of the environment. Breeders would then plant seeds from those wild tomatoes, the mostly blue ones, and seeds from a successful domesticated tomato, a variety proven to grow well in the area, but aren't naturally blue. When those tomato seeds begin to flower, a plant breeder would remove the pollen from one flower and place it in the flower of the other variety. This resulting batch of tomatoes born is called F1 in the seed breeding world. Breeders will then plant the F1 seeds from the especially blue tomatoes, and those tomatoes are pollinated the natural way, without human interference. What grows is called F2, the second generation. Breeders will pick the bluest tomatoes of that batch and plant them. They continue to manually select and grow seeds from the bluest tomato plants until they see consistency in color and other desirable traits like disease resistance. In plant breeding, it can take dozens or even hundreds of generations to get the consistency and quality you're looking for. So finally, however many generations later, a truly blue tomato is born and is a hit with chefs and farmers across the country.